And Cedar Run is a, uh, a nonprofit, and its, uh, its purpose is to help preserve the wildlife and habitat of New Jersey's wildlife. Uh, it uh, is situated on a 171-acre uh, wooded plot. In addition to the to the woodlands, there's the the Woodford uh, <coughs> Nature Center. There's the uh, uh, the animal housing area, and of course the re re rehabilitation uh, hospital that serves over 6,300 injured or orphaned animals per year. It's, it's an amazing thing. Uh, again, it's the it is the mission of Cedar Run to become to be a community resource uh, for the importance of preserving and enhancing healthy ecosystems for all. It's a wonderful organization. And tonight they're giving a very special program for us, raptors and reptiles, about these wonderful creatures, how they're alike, how they're dissimilar, how do they fit into the ecosystems in which, in which, they, uh, which they live, what are their ecological surfaces, uh, and how, how, do these, uh, how do these these wonderful creatures uh, affect the, the natural world in which they live. And so now without further uh, ado, I would like to introduce uh, Jim from, um, Cedar, from Cedar Run. And I want to give a very warm welcome to Jim and to our non-human visitors as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Very, very good. So yes, we are Cedar Run, Woodford Cedar Run Wildlife. We have huge. My name is Jim. Um, I am the actual coordinator for Cedar Run. Um, as you heard, we have about 171 acres. We're tucked away up in Medford, about 45 minutes away from here on traffic. Um, we have 171 acres. We have about three miles of hiking trails. So you can come out there, you can walk around. Uh, we have our nature center. You can come in and check out our gift shop. That's always a fun thing. Uh, it's also where we have our reptile room for our reptile friends that can't stand the winters here. We have our thermal thing in the inside, so nice and warm. Um, we also have our uh, wildlife housing area where we take in animals through our wildlife hospital. Uh, for the most part, we try to patch up the animals, make sure they're able to be released. But there are always some animals that come to our hospital that, whatever the reason may be, we want to be safe for them, we want to be for people, for them to be released. So in certain instances, we have about 60 current resident animals to stay with us all year long. I do have a couple here with us tonight, we'll get those in just a second. Uh, but you are welcome to come through and see some of the ones that can't be released at a refuge as well if you come by and visit us. Um, in regards to our animals, if you'll be to our wildlife hospital, I mentioned we take in. Last year we had a little over 6,300 animals. Past three years in a row, we've been getting more and more every year. Um, we think with the pandemic, everyone's been either home more or been going out to nature more, so it's great things, people find it things. It also means they're finding things that may be injured or just need a little bit extra help. We will take in pretty much any native New Jersey animal. We only do it with native New Jersey animals. Um, we do recommend people call us first because a lot of times we might be able to give you a tip um, that you can just sit back and just watch the animal, see how it's doing before you have to go and try to grab it because that is going to cause a lot of stress for whatever the animal is. So we recommend you call us before you try to just bring something to us. Um, we do see quite a lot. We have a lot of birds. It's our bird friends in the back there spread throughout here. We have a lot of birds. Um, some of our injuries that we tend to get uh, unfortunately are largely human calls. We get a lot of birds that have been in car accidents or maybe have flown into a building or maybe been attacked by some kind of pet. Uh, but we do a pretty good job in you know, patching things up as long as they get to us in a uh, pretty re recent time. Um, and like I said, we try to patch them up, do whatever we have to do. Besides injured animals, we also take orphaned animals. Especially if we had that, depending where you were, pretty bad storm the other night. Um, even though it's near the end of summer, there's not too many baby animals around. There are still some squirrels and stuff might have a little bit of a late nest coming through. Um, especially after storms, we get birds and squirrels and raccoons and stuff that have been blown out of their nests in the trees and things like that. And if people call us, we try to do some things at your house because that's where the parents should be. Hopefully they can bring them back. But in the case that a little baby animal doesn't have a parent anymore for whatever reason, we can do our best to try to raise it up so it can then go be released uh, and hopefully live a nice long life out there wherever it is. Um, some of the animals we don't take into our hospital. Um, a lot of people, I'm sure you guys are probably aware of the nature club, but we do have bears in New Jersey. We have black bears. Um, they're a little bit too big for us. <laughs> we do have 171 acres. Very, very small amount that is actually developed in our hospital is pretty small. So we don't have room for a black bear. If anybody happens to call us, which hasn't happened for a long time, uh, find an injured black bear. Uh, we have some contact with some places up in the northern part of the state that more commonly deals with bears and can take them in. 
Uh, same thing with kind of bats, yeah. not large, uh, but bats there are some special permits with that. We have a couple of contacts with the state as well that refuges that solely focus on bats. So we're recommend give us a call first, and we kind of figure out whether you got to bring it to us or you can give it to someone else. We're going to try to help everything that we can. In regards to what I have tonight, we are talking about raptors and reptiles. So can anyone tell me what I mean by raptors? I do not mean like Jurassic Park. <laughs> birds of prey. Birds of prey, yes. Can you give me some examples of birds of prey? Um, hawk. Hawk, that's one. Falcon. Falcon. Um, Red-tailed hawk. Red-tailed hawk, and the specific for the hawks, yeah. Red-tailed hawks are going to be a good one. Vultures, yep, they are. That's not a vultures. Kestrels. Kestrels. They're there with the falcons. Owls. 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 <laughs> so we got owls, <coughs> hawks, vultures, falcons. We're missing one. <coughs> Eagles. Eagles. Those are going to be our big birds of prey, our raptors. That's what we do in the United States team as our birds of prey, our raptors. Yes, all of those. We are calling them raptors mainly because when they go to hunt or eat, they're mainly going to be using their feet. Kind of how when we see you know, the movies and think of dinosaurs, they're going to hunt with their feet a lot. So raptors hunting there, birds of prey, they're going to be eating things. All these birds of prey are strict carnivores, not eating any kind of vegetables. And in fact, some people, sometimes when they come to our facility, they see some of our animals eating. We have to warn people, they still are wild animals, even though they are in our care. And we have to provide a natural diet for them. Um, so it's not always the prettiest thing, but it's part of it. You know, they, they deserve their time to do what they got to do. I will start with, instead of a raptor, we'll get to those in a minute, I'll kind of work my way up in size here, is our reptile friend. Now here in New Jersey, we have actually a surprisingly good amount of reptiles, pretty wide variety. The one that I have here tonight, maybe one, if you're lucky, you may see around your yard. And yes, I say lucky if you see one. So first, I promise, I'm not going to leave my hand. Don't worry. If you are scared, that's totally okay. I promise he's not going to leave my hand. He's not going to hurt anybody. And also, if any of my live animal friends, you can't touch. I have some stuff you will be able to touch in a moment, but you can't touch your live animal friends. So you're going to be okay. Now, the friend that I have here, being nice and quickly, is Orin. Orin is a northern pine snake. And the way, and the reason I say you are lucky if you happen to see one, maybe in your yard if you're going on a trail, is because in New Jersey, our friends with pine snakes are actually an endangered species. So, if you see them, really, really cool. I promise you they want nothing to do with you. They are not going to hurt you unless you try to bother them. He is not venomous. He is not poisonous. He does have teeth. If he bites you, it's not a pleasant experience. But he's only going to bite you if you are getting too close and you haven't listened to all of his other warning signs. Now, I did say he's not venomous and he's also not poisonous. Does anybody know the difference between venomous and poisonous? Because there is a difference. So, the main difference between the venomous and poisonous is. Basically, the way I think of it is venomous is if something bites you and you get sick. Poisonous is if you bite something and you get sick. So think of a poisonous mushroom. If you eat that, you're probably going to get sick. If you ate a cobra, I mean, that's your choice. You're probably not going to get too sick from it. But if a cobra bites you, yeah, you're probably not going to do too well. So in the entire world, there are only, I believe, like two or maybe three that are just recently finding actual poisonous snakes. Most of the snakes that people consider dangerous would be a venomous snake. In New Jersey, that would be our friend the rattlesnake. We also have the copperhead. You are most likely never going to see either of those around here unless you specifically go and looking for them. Our friend the pine snake here is a constrictor. So you can see kind of what he's doing around my arm here. He just wraps himself around it. Hold on. If he were really hungry, he would grab his food, which for a pine snake, they will actually believe enough climb up trees and go after birds in the nest or bird eggs. You also go down inside uh, like rodent holes, so go after small baby squirrels, maybe small bunnies if you catch them. Bunch of them, you go for them, go for them. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, if you don't want some rodents going through your garden, then get some snakes around. No, that'll help you out. They don't charge rent, they're really nice that way. <laughs> so he will grab his food, he will 
will wrap his body around it and squeeze it until it basically stops breathing. And then he will slowly start to swallow it. The way that he swallows it is because he can take his face here, which he is being very big with tonight. You see, his head isn't really that big. Might make you confused how he could eat something like a small squirrel or a small rabbit or something like that. It's because snake jaws work a little bit differently than yours and mine. With snakes, their bottom jaw is not locked in like ours is to our skull. Theirs actually has a little bit of a stretchy tendon. That instead of just swiveling like this, they can actually drop down. And their skin is stretched. <laughs> you don't see it there, they're just skin kind of stretched down. And then their bottom jaw right in the front here, instead of being a solid bone like ours, is actually split right in the middle, giving some stretchy tendon, so it can also stretch this way. So you can drop down this way, open this way, and they say they can most snakes can fall something roughly about three times bigger than their head. Their mouth will just stretch open, and they'll have a good time swallowing it down there. So uh, they could squirrel. But this actually would go for like a young squirrel. Maybe not like a full grown size one, but you go for a young squirrel. Is he full grown? He is pretty much full grown. If I uh, see if he's gonna let me stretch him out a little bit here. He usually likes to be tucked up a little bit high up there. Uh, he's roughly about like four and a half, five feet. Uh, I believe the record for a high snake that I'm aware of is roughly around six feet. So they can get a little bit bigger. The biggest snake in New Jersey is actually black rat snake. They can get up to about seven feet. Um, again, they're not poisonous, they're not venomous, they're a constrictor just like him. You are more likely to find the rat, the black rat snakes than these guys around here. Black rat snakes are very common. Um, we actually recently just got a baby one, a little baby uh, black rat snake. It's very adorable. We're very excited for him to be able to come out with programs once he gets a little bit bigger. See, this will be just as wiggly as our friend Gordon here. I'm going to come down as soon as I said that. Okay. Now, I will say, as I walk around, sometimes people will notice his eyes and they'll get weird out because they notice that he doesn't. Usually when we're talking to younger kids, I try to mess with them and I tell them to have a staring contest with the snake. <laughs> and I will tell them 100% of the time they are going to lose because it is physically impossible for snakes to blink. They do not have eyelids. Their eyes are always open all of the time. They have a clear scale that actually covers their eye that keeps it protected. If you ever see a picture of a snake or if you come up upon a snake and its skin is looking kind of dull and gray, its eyes actually almost look a little bit blue, it's because when they need to grow larger, all of these hard scales don't really stretch. So they will shed off the entire outer layer of their skin, even that little eye cap that covers their eye. So when they're doing that, they're actually pretty much blind. And that's usually when someone gets bit by a snake. Because if the snake can't see you and see what you are, and all of a sudden it feels it being grabbed, it's probably going to turn around and bite to tell you to stop touching it. Because most things in nature, when they're grabbing it, are going to try to eat it. So, if you see one, just give it a little bit of space. Now, my coworker Keith over here, he is going to walk around with a snake skin, the shed snake skin. This is the that you can touch, you don't have to. I think some people get a little weirded out by it. So, this is not like a dead snake or right anything. This is the very outer layer of a snake skin in the shed. I believe this is actually his. Yeah. One of his most recent shed. And if you look at the head, you can actually see the eye caps on there. This is his cool or Yeah, this is his. To your arm, is he cool or warm? So, snakes, being a reptile, they are cold-blooded or ectothermic. So, he kind of likes to be wrapped up around. He does one reason why he's wrapped up, because it's a warm. Um, he's, he's not like cold, but I can definitely tell that my body's warmer than his. So I can feel that like he's absorbing some of my heat, but it's not like feeling like an ice cube or anything. There's definitely a little bit on the cool side, but he's doing all right. Do they hear? Good question. So you ask if they can hear. If you look on him, you don't really see yeah, any ears. He doesn't have ears. Look, there's no ear holes there. It's just solid scales. He has his little nostrils right up here. We'll talk about in a second. He has no ear holes. Snakes don't really hear in the sense of how you and I hear. He can't really hear vibrations coming through the air. He feels vibrations coming through the ground. I think his stomach is usually all stretched out across the ground. When something is walking around, he will feel the vibrations in the ground, and they kind of travel up into his head and kind of interpret them as the vibrations. We call
call it here, but it's not really here. Like, if you were to talk right now, he wouldn't hear it, so you can't get those vibrations. He can feel the vibrations running through my body and down my arms, so he knows I'm making weird noises. But he, he can notice that I'm doing this, but if you're not touching them or you're not kind of walking really close to them, they can't feel those vibrations through the ground, and they don't really know. So some people are scared snakes, and so when I'm going through the woods or hiking, I scream and yell. So you have to know. Snakes aren't going to be here. Best advice if you don't want to come upon a snake when you're walking around. Best advice is actually kind of everyone's probably just give a stomp your feet a little bit, walk a little bit heavy, and the snakes will kind of sense that something big is coming, and they're most likely going to say, nope, don't want that, and they're going to go away. Because anything big coming out towards them is probably going to try to eat them, so they're going to try to avoid that. I'm looking right at the camera. Good job, Warren. <laughs> I wish I could say you were trained that well. <laughs> Questions about things. what eats him? What eats him? Or is him? it a habitat loss that is oh. making him A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Their biggest reason is humans, unfortunately, of course, as most things are nowadays. Uh, habitat loss is a big one. They live, he's like pine snakes, so they live usually out in the pine barrens. Uh, we do have a pretty good protection to most of the pine barrens, but there is development going on. Um, if there's a new construction going on, actually, and they find evidence of a pine snake, even just like an old skin, immediately shut down, they have to do a whole giant survey, make sure they're not around, and figure everything out, when they do things legally. Not everyone always does things legally, or they won't report that they found a snake because they don't want to have everything shut down and cost more money. So, habitat loss is a big thing. Um, Things do eat him, that's not really affecting their numbers too much, that's kind of just part of the balance of nature. Uh, the big things that would mainly eat him when he's a full size one like this would be some hawks and eagles and uh, owls, things like that. There is a type of snake called a king snake that eats other snakes. Uh, full size like this, it would have to be a full grown king snake, might be a little tech in there. But especially when they're younger, more things would go after them. Foxes might go after them, raccoons and stuff other birds when they're a little bit smaller. Because, like I said, he doesn't have venom to protect himself. He just has to rely on looking kind of scary. He can hiss really loud when he wants to. He's not trained how to do it on command. <laughs> um, he also will do a fun thing. He's not going to do it because he's not scared right now. But if he is unhappy with you or scared, he will take the tip of his tail and he will vibrate back and forth really, really quickly. Black rabbit snake. But there's no rabbits here. So just like this, if he rattled it, you wouldn't hear anything, you just see his tail going. <laughs> but if he's out in the pine barrens and his tail is amongst all the dried leaves and pine needles, it makes a little bit of noise. And animals may go, hmm, you don't look like a rabbit snake, but you're making a noise like one. Is it worth the effort for me to find out? <laughs> or just go find an easier meal that potentially can't kill me. They're probably going to go find an easier meal. So it's a good little, we'll say, little fit. Little white fly try to make himself be able to last a little bit longer there. There's actually quite a few snakes around here that live in the same areas that rattlesnakes do, have learned, and if I mimic that, things tend to leave me alone. Maybe it's a good idea to copy that. He is a beautiful snake. He is a very good snake. I love using him. Some people get a little worried because he's so wiggly, he has to move around a lot, but I think that makes him look a little bit more active. <laughs> I love the snakes very much. Nice. They are really cool. You can see with his scales, some people. If they've never touched a snake before, they get worried they're going to be slimy, kind of like a fish or something. It's not slimy. His skin is perfectly dry, on my hands. His scales are just really, really smooth, so you can kind of see when he gets the light, kind of shiny there, especially because he just shed. If they've just shed, their scales are going to be a little bit more shiny, just because they got that nice you know, new coat of paint on them, we'll say. You can write this litter around here. Any final questions before we move to our next animal? I had two of the uh, rat lights mix at the foundation of my front porch. That's great. If you have some rats, you're yeah. probably not going to have mice. <laughs> We're rats. Yeah. So put that there. Just recently, they are going to introduce the uh, timber rattler again. You know, so what's the status on that that you know of? Um, as far as I know, they're also endangered. I believe actually pretty much all of the snakes in New Jersey are at least threatened. And a couple of them are actually endangered. Um, I don't know too much about the, how the release is going uh, for them. I know that is a testy subject. Some people get upset when they find out that they're releasing rattlesnakes in an area that might be near them. But even those guys, they're not going to want to bite you. They just want to be left alone. Everything just wants to be left alone. You don't bother it, it's not going to bother you. Most animals are going to try to get away from you. 
Because think of a snake, if a snake has venom, to get that to you, it has to put its head directly where you are, as close to you as possible. That's where it's most vulnerable. It doesn't want to do that. It wants to get away. So, as long as you leave him alone, you'll be alright. Is there another question? Um, is he that color when he hatches? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, so a lot of the snakes there, their pattern will change a little bit from being a juvenile or a baby as they slightly get older. Um, his are a little bit, not like dramatic as some. Um, actually, Keith just saw a baby one uh, a little while ago. Um, so they're a little bit different, slightly different patterns on there. Um, one of the most dramatic is actually the black rat snake. Their pattern almost looks a little bit like this when they're a baby, until they get a couple feet long and they turn all black. So it just depends a little bit. Some people will look He weighs, uh, let's see, last time I made Maybe three pounds. Oh, right there, not too bad. They eat good. Oh, he eats very well. Oh, how often do you guys think he eats? That's a good question. Once a week. Every two weeks. Every two weeks. Wait, no, I meant like every. Go with that one, that was right. <laughs> <laughs> it's every other week. It's every other week. As an adult, he's not really using a lot of energy, he doesn't need to eat that much. The whole goal of the snake is to get food and then sit there. And don't move, because if you're moving, you're wasting energy. As long as nothing's bothering you, you're not really going to go through too much. Go get warm in the day, that's pretty much what you're going to try to do. Um, so he eats every other week, usually he eats two, maybe three mice. Maybe four if he's being a little piggish. I will say he's, uh, and you see Wiggly, one of our more adventurous snakes, sometimes he gets a little bit more than the others, or the other ones don't eat, because sometimes snakes will go on a hunger trick where they're just not hungry. And we're not going to force feed them. They're, if they want to eat, they want to eat. If not, they don't. We've had some snakes go for like six months without eating, wow. and it's fine. They're not wasting energy, they can store that, and they're going to be okay. So. How long before his eye caps grow back? They're there. They're just clear. So what is as soon as he sheds off that outer layer of the old one, the new ones are just right there. I thought he was blind then. They're blind when that old skin is just about to come off, you actually see like a bluish kind of tinge. Oh, okay. If they call it going into blue phase, looks like a little milky sometimes. That's a sign that they probably can't see, probably give them some value. Like if one of ours is like that, we don't bring them out. It's a little stressful, we're not going to be able to see or anything. Last question. When you feed them, will they accept uh, prey that's dead, or does it have to be live? So pretty much all of our animals that we have live with us year-round are fed uh, already dead, killed uh, food. Um, generally, if they were able to go and catch live food, we wouldn't have to keep them with us. That'd be a sign they'd be able to go and live on their own. Uh, in the case of our friend Orin here, he'll eat pretty much whatever you put in front of him. <laughs> he is not too big. Uh, we've had given him live before he'll go for it, but he does tend to go for the uh, already frozen and defrosted and warmed up a little bit. Uh, it doesn't fight back, and that's kind of the main thing. If it's a live mouse, it's going to call and bite because it doesn't want to die, obviously. And so is it right. But to keep our animals safe, we feed things that aren't going to try to potentially hurt them. We like to think they appreciate it. Alright, I'm going to put them away so we can get ready for our next friend. Question for you guys. If I don't end right at 8, go a few minutes over, is that okay? Yes. Okay. I just realized what time it is. Alright, so first got to get them off my hand here. As I said, constrictor, he likes to wrap. He's been poking out. No, put back in there. Why do you need a bag? So we put him in the bag because, especially with him being so bigly, if we open up that lid, mm -hmm. um, sometimes he likes to adventure. Um. And if we're in a classroom with small children, they do not appreciate that. <laughs> older people. And I mean, older people yeah. sometimes, you never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But generally, he'd be yeah. on the ground, and oh, people's yeah. first response when something they don't like is kind of, they stop yeah. and could hurt Some, them. Yeah. So, we'll see. Now, I'm going to see if this friend wants to come out and play. Sometimes she's a little moody. If she doesn't, we'll try this other one and then come back to her. But we'll see if she's going to cooperate today. We are moving away from our reptile friends. Moving on to our raptors. You're backwards, Peter. Right. Thank you. I know. There's one foot. Second foot. Number two. I got one foot. I need that second foot. are totally fine. I just ask you to turn off flash if you're going to take a picture. 
can't see what it is, just see in just a second. I'm just getting everything set here. So this is a great horn owl. Her name is Athena. You'll notice a couple special things about her. We'll get into that in just a moment. Great horned owls are our largest owl that lives here in New Jersey year round. There's only one owl that gets a little bit bigger. That would be the snowy owl, but they're only here every couple of years, so they just migrate through. So the biggest ones we count as our long term residents, staying here pretty much all year. Now you will notice she has one eye. She was not born that way. She actually came to us. She looked up at you. Oh, she's going to look at all of you, I'm sure. She's going to keep a good eye on all of you all turn up there. Take her around. Guess what? It was 2013, a little bit under 10 years ago. Um, she came in, and you'll notice that her feathers on this side are a little bit misshapen. Her wing on that side. She was unfortunately had a uh, vehicle strike and kind of messed up and broke that wing on her right side, and also kind of hit her the right side of her face there. She had the eye for just up until like a year or two ago, but you notice that it kept getting infections and having issues, and it was so stressful for us to keep having to give her medicine because she's not just going to stand there and let you put the drops in her eye. To grab her, she doesn't yeah. really like that too much. It would be very nice if she just lets you just put it in there without trying to bite your fingers off. Yeah. Um, but since it was just so much stress, we actually did have a surgery. Uh, the veterinarian decided the best option was to actually do the surgery, remove the eye, and to be honest, she is doing tons better without that eye. It's not that constant pain and pressure all of it. And she couldn't see out of it anyway, so she's not seen less or anything. She's always pretty much been blind on that side since the accident. Um, but she was deemed unreleasable because of the eye injury in that wing. She can't fly anymore. She doesn't necessarily know that. Instinct is if they get scared, get away. Even though her wing doesn't really work, she can flap a little bit, but she's not going to be able to stay up in the air. She's going to kind of go right down the ground. That's one reason she is attached to my glove here. If she does get scared and happen to hop off, she is attached by a little rope here. She'll go the flick herself in there and I'll be able to get her back up on the glove. We'll let her come down a little bit here as we go around here. With that eye that you can see, you'll notice as they walk around, she might stare at you. And that means she has to turn her face directly at you. As an owl, they cannot move their eyes in their head. Their eyes are so big and take up so much space <laughs> that if you are actually, if you look up videos, if you lift up the feathers where their ear is, you actually see their eye through the, their ear. It takes up so much space. If you were to have the same proportion of an eye to your skull, your eyes would be about the size of grapefruits. Like that. And actually, they're not really eyeballs for my tooth. They kind of go back a little bit more. So that gives them that extremely good binocular vision to see really far. They say they can see like a mouse crossing like football fields by at night. Extremely, extremely good vision, but only right in front of them. Anything to the side, they can't really see too well. Their peripheral vision is not good. That's why we get a lot of these animals that get hit by cars because they're focused on food, might be on the side of the road over here. They're not used to things traveling on you know, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. They can't see it until they end up getting hurt a little bit there. She does have fuzzy feet, good observation. Mr. Keith, if you want to walk around with some of those feet real quick. So Mr. Keith does have some bird feet and some bird wings that he's going to walk around with here. They are from real birds. So if you don't want to touch them, I understand they have been cleaned. They're from salvage. So with the owls, they will have the feathers all the way down to their talons. Those feathers all the way down to their talons to help keep them nice and silent. With them flying around at night, they need to be as quiet as they possibly can. Even for that last second as they reach out with their feet, which you will see these great horned owls have really big feet. They got to catch their food. They want to be as silent so nothing knows it's there until it feels those talons grabbing onto it. What is their life expectancy? So we had one, she lived to be like 30, 30 or something? Like, she was up there, she was the oldest, but she was mid 30s, kind of up there. She's pretty big up there. <laughs> and they're, they're big feet. I said, great right now, so they have one of our biggest here. I will also say they are one of the strongest. Why does she have a mouth? It's a little bit of stress. 
kind of open, panting a little bit as you design your hot. But she's not hot right now. Hot. A little Let's stress. Hold on one second. Yeah. You know, there. With those towns, real quick, I just want to mention they are extremely, extremely strong. They estimate most great more cows are actually females, which are going to be bigger than males. They can squeeze up to about 500 pounds per square inch. Most humans can squeeze with around 100. And it's all centered on those four needle sharp talons per foot. So when she grabs something, it's not getting out unless she wants it to look up. That's the reason I'm wearing this glove. <laughs> if she wanted to, she could even get through this glove if she really, really, really angry at me. Uh, but it keeps it protected because those talons are meant to hold on to the tree branch and stuff, just holding on. We're a lot softer than the tree branch. But when she goes out to grab food, she puts on that full force and nothing's getting out. Um, you did ask how much she weighs. Looking at her, she looks like a pretty big bird. But as you can come around with that wing there, if you felt the wing, you know those feathers are really, really soft. That's going to help keep them nice and quiet. Feathers are not known to be very heavy. And I will say she is about 90% feather. So most birds are lighter than you think they are. Her actual body is very small. If I could safely stick my finger through the feathers on her chest until I reach down where her breath bone would be, I could probably get all the way up to like my knuckle back here. Or more. She is feather. So I think last time we weighed her, getting towards winter, they put on a little bit more weight in winter, but she's usually somewhere around three pounds. That's it. That's it. That's it. Even big giant bald eagles, well, they're two more so they're females. Birds are lighter than you think they are. So if you're heavy, you can't fly very easy. Um, even with the glove on, do the claws still hurt? The claws hurt? I can feel the pressure. If she squeezes it down and she squeezes the fork, it hurts. It is not a pleasant experience. She's cooperating right now, not squeezing too hard. She's just squeezing on enough to hold on. So you gotta notice she kind of leans a little bit. That's due to that wing being messed up. She has a little bit of a balance issue, so she kind of overcompensates. So I'm not moving too fast, because I move too fast. She <laughs> Because she's scared, she's going to fall, so she grips on. I like my fingers as they are, so I try to do it nice and slow. Why does it have to be too Kind of, yes. They're going to get her soft, keep her nice and light, and also help keep her warm. Why does it she want to lure draw for Many years of training. So if it's like she just came in last week, I would not be able to do this. Oh. <laughs> this is many years of us slowly getting her introduced to be comfortable enough for us to get this close. Talk about the you who stand up on his left, you get a little support around her ankles and everything. <laughs> Mr. Keith here, he works in a wildlife hospital. He has dealt with completely wild great more dogs that come in. They are not nearly this friendly. No. No. How long has she been with you? Uh, she's about 10 years, a little bit under that. Like I said, it can be up to the 30s or so. Isn't it? How long would she, would they, is it average like? Right? In captivity, they can go from the 30s, a little bit less out in the wild. Uh, so probably she should give her around for quite a while more. It is a toss up with us because we can give them all the medicine and food and everything, so they have less stress. But they're also with us because they have some kind of injuries that might counterbalance what we can do. So, you're kind of not always sure we can do everything we can. Hope they live a nice long time. So, not, they don't necessarily see in black and white. I know she saw me moving towards her feet. She said, Don't touch my feet. We don't, as far as I know, we're not exactly sure exactly what she is. But they seem to be missing a couple of the, uh, I believe it's the cones in their eyes, actually protect color. I think the rods sense light and dark, cones and cones sense color. One of those, I forget which one, but they have less of the ones that actually sense color because so much of their eye is just sensitive to light to get those subtle little changes in the dark, just from the moonlight that you and me, but you go, yeah, it's pitch black out. They can see really far away, even when there's no moon out or anything, just from starlight. So they have so many of those other receptive devices to just pick up that light and dark. They don't have quite as many of the other the light color ones, uh, the color sensing uh, parts of their eye. So they see a little bit less than us. I don't think they know exactly what colors they see, but it's not like um, they can't, not like maybe if they say a bull can't see the color red or anything. Okay. Not, not quite like that. But they're definitely less <laughs> noticeable color than you and I. Alright, right in the back. Uh, don't they have, uh, their ears are located one higher and one lower? For most of the owls, not every single one, yes, but most of them will have this kind of a lopsided, so one ear will be up a little bit higher, one ear will be down a little bit lower, that is so when sound hits them, it's going to hit one ear a millisecond before the other, 
So they're going to be able to orient their head until the right where that sound is hitting at the exact same time of the ear. They're going to know that food is directly where they're facing, and they can swoop down and go and get it. So even if there's a mouse like under a leaf or something, they can't see it, they're going to hear that scurry and be able to use their head kind of a radar dish and pinpoint it's there and go down and get it. You answered it. I already answered it. <laughs> does, does she have any reason to hoot? Does she make it? So, great horned owls are the ones that make the traditional kind of hooten sound that most people think of when they hear an owl. Not all owls hoot. Uh, she unfortunately does not do it on command. Not one of the things we trained her to do. We just stand up on love and go in and out of the box. That's all we ask for. Um, she does sometimes. Usually, when they hoot at you, it's not a hi, how are you? It's a go away kind of thing. It's not a friendly kind of noise. Uh, other noises they will make, they will also clack their beak. They'll snap their beak together, and that's also a back up. You're too close. Um, they can also hiss. Yes, they can make a whole bunch of different noises there. Generally, they're all telling you to go away, to be honest with you. Yeah, this one's a little more Yeah. I've been all day long where I live, and I'm constantly looking up, like, where are you? If it's traditional, like, it's usually a great more now. And then I hear another one on the other side, and I'm like, what's going on? Where are they? <laughs> like she does that, but if you, she doesn't want you to see her, you're not going to see her. They can blend in really well. That's what I was going to ask. Maybe you don't know, maybe some of you know. Is it, does anyone know the owl counts in Jersey? Like you know, it's one of go out and... We every once in a while have like owl hikes, like at our refuge. Yeah. Um, yeah. We usually don't hear great horns too much. We hear like screech owls, which are a tiny owl. Yeah. Um, but there are a couple places around that. Pretty, I guarantee you, any if you're talking about tall pines, I know they have screeches there. I was just wondering if there's like a count, like the odd count. I don't know if any off the top of my head. I'm sure there are. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put her away so it's time for our last animal friend. Let's go. What does the screeching owl sound like compared to the great horn? So you would think based on its name it would screech, but it would be wrong. Because why would scientists name it accurately? So the screech owl, the noise that it usually makes, is actually more of a whinny. It's almost like a horse. It's a little bit like, and usually you won't see screech owls and these great horned owls at the same time because great horned owls eat screech owls. <laughs> screech owls. <laughs> yeah, great horned owls are the top of the food chain. One thing they do eat that you guys probably would not expect, um, since they're so big and powerful and out at night, they are nocturnal. Not all owls are, but these guys are. Um, another animal that's out at night that you don't want to run into would be a skunk. <laughs> Great horned owls eat skunks. Yeah. Yeah. They do not have a sense of smell, so it doesn't bother them a little bit. They eat skunks. They eat skunks. Nine times out of ten, if they come into the wildlife hospital, they will smell like a skunk. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's sometimes like, I'll walk in and be like, oh, we got a skunk, and they're like, no, the other one. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> it's a fun little bonus there. Yeah. It's a fun um, guessing game. <laughs> <laughs> how, how far did did she swivel her? How far is she capable of swiveling? So most owls have roughly about 270 degrees of rotation. Most of the raptors have a lot more than you and I. You and I have roughly about 180 degrees, half a circle. We can go from one shoulder to the other without having to turn our body or without turning our body. We don't look anymore. We got to turn. The owls, one of these other birds of prey, they can just look right behind them. Absolutely no problem. If they want to keep, like, if they spin their head this way, look behind them. If they want to look over this way, they've got to spin back this way. They still have a spine, they can't do a full circle like you see in the movies and stuff. I'm going to tell people that. Um, but they do three quarters of a circle, which is a lot more of you and I, so we've got to give them credit on that one. Uh, for our next round, we're moving from a raptor that would be out at night, moving to one that would be out in the day, because someone actually already mentioned it. Um, again, pictures are fine, so make sure you turn the flash off for this one. Um, this guy is honestly, don't tell the others, he's one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, he's a favorite. Yeah. Uh, he's a staff favorite. He's been with us, actually, of our current education animals that are trained to come out of the club, come out and see people. He's actually our oldest, he's one of our originals. He actually came to us back on Christmas morning of 2001. Wow. Now, he may go to the bathroom, that's usually one of the first things he does when he comes out. And if he does, yeah, he's going to do it. Yes. Yep. Oh. 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 Don't worry, I promise we'll clean it up. <laughs> Aldora. Aldora is a red-tailed hawk. Someone had mentioned red-tailed hawks before. 
As I said, he came to us on Christmas Day back in 2001, unfortunately, also a vehicle strike. You'll notice as he walks around, his one eye is also a little bit messed up. So his one eye it is still there, however, it's kind of grayed over and kind of sunken in. Um, so you can't see that he's blind on his left side, you see it there. You can still see out of his right, no problem, because that left side is going to be blind. So he doesn't always necessarily like people scooping up from his left side. So when we come up to him, we try to make sure he knows we're there. He, you can see he can swivel his head perfectly fine, so he can turn to look at you. Just want to make sure he knows that you're there so you're not surprising him. Now, I did say red tails are one of our most common. So with red tails, they are what we call a generalist. He kind of eats whatever he can grab. He would eat that snake friend. He would eat small birds. He would eat pretty much whatever he can grab. He's not as strong and powerful as the great horned owl, but he's still he's still up there. I do have a foot and a wing I'll walk around with in a moment. Any questions? Um, if they're like super hungry, would they walk like an owl? No. With him, he would lose 99% of the time. Great horned owl is bigger and stronger. The only big birds really going to mess with a full-grown great horned owl like that would be the bald eagles. Um, and they are only going to mess with them in the day because at night, great horned owls have been known to raid a bald eagle's nest. It's going to be a little bit more. So, what have I grabbed the outfit? Hold on. So, with our red tail box, you can here, we've got the wing here, we also got the foot. So, you can see with the foot, not doesn't have the feathers all the way down like the owl does. So, now this guy was in my backyard the other day. That is a cooper. So a little bit smaller than him. How's he? Okay. But another hawk you can see around. Cooper's hawk really like to eat other birds. Yes. So if you have a bird feeder, yes. yep. I have a whole back yard full of birds. You may have some less birds soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're really cool to see. Really cool. Which are red tail. You will see when he does have that reddish tail. They don't get that reddish tail until they're about like four or five years old. It's going to be a little bit difficult, but they are our largest hawk that we have around here. A little bit, yeah, kind of something. A little bit more for a kind of bigger than that. See the part scales on it. So what can we scare it? What feathers do the owl have? It has chest. With the feathers all the way down to the town of the owl, that is yes. silent. Yeah. Yeah. They're 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 slower. Slower. They are absolutely silent. They are absolutely So they're slower and yes. silent, so they can go around at night. It says not as much noise as you can see a little quieter, but you don't need to move it back. In the day, he's flying around. Tons of noise going around, and he's a lot of faster. He can swoop down there, he can grab his food, totally fine. He could if he wanted to, probably. You will notice on both the owl wing, this wing, if you look at him, his top part is dark brown. The outer wing is up on his head here. Then underneath the wing, or also on his belly, is a little bit lighter. This is called counter shaded. A lot of these animals. Not even a good bird to prey. A lot of other animals will have this kind of color in there, that dark on top, light on bottom. That is so when he is flying up in the sky, little animals looking up, that nice white belly and the white wing kind of blend into the sky, make him kind of hide and just sneak up on his food. And then if he is down a little bit loud, those darker colors on his back will kind of help him blend in with the forest floor. So it's all about that camera. Like I said, it's not just these birds that do it, a lot of animals that do it. Even in the ocean, you know, think of sharks, great white sharks, like dark top, white belly, same kind of principle there. Over here. Now you will see him looking around a lot. He also has those ears up there, just like the owl. You won't see them, they don't have any external ears like you and I. They just have pretty much a hole in their side of the head covered by feathers. But I assure you, they can hear you. You may not kind of see it, but the ears are there. They're perfectly <laughs> capable of knowing where we are. He does have that sharp beak. We always think of it uh, as these animals kind of use their beak kind of like a big sharp knife and they use their feet kind of like a big fork to help hold on to it as they grab onto it and rip up their food and have their little dinner or breakfast or whatever it may be there. Does anybody have any questions? Does he get mice also? He also gets mice. He will also get chicks. Um, as I said, we have to provide a, a realistic diet as we can to them. So we have to provide a little bit of variation here. If we only fed him just one thing, 
be kind of boring. I have to make sure you get the right nutrients from everything. So you do give them a little bit of a variety there. Um, I'd say with him, he, he also gets rats sometimes. Yeah. They're usually chicks, rats, and mice. The occasional snake. Occasional snake if one is not but smart and accidentally goes inside of his enclosure. <laughs> then he gets a surprise meal. <laughs> Good job. Though. Didn't think you did, but you did. Um, do you live live food? We don't give him live food. It's kind of the same thing. Live food is going to fight back. It could potentially hurt him. And with that one eye not really being there, his depth of perception isn't that great. So that's why we're kind of surprised he was able to get that snake. Very lucky on him. Maybe not a smart snake. Who knows? Um, so he gets things that are already kind of prepared for him. Does his feathers change color as he gets older? So when he's young, he won't have the red tail. It'll take about five years for that tail to get a nice red tail with that little black bar on there. So you know, it's not red right now. If they're flying up in the sky, the sun's trying to make it look reddish paint. Right now it sounds like a brownish, but call it a red tail. Um, they'll get a little bit darker as well all over as they get older. One way you can tell a red tail from some of the other hawks as they're flying around, you can see that dark crew called a belly band. As we're going around there, you can see that. Well, that's also a good thing if they're flying around. If they don't have the red tail, they might still have that belly band there, right across there. Yeah, about 10 years ago, I was walking in my garden. And out of the sky, drops a squirrel. That's a band. I had a flying squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, typical thought, damn, squirrels are getting really clumsy, you know? <laughs> Then I put the squirrel in the trash can, went back to do what I was, and I felt the shadow come over. I looked up, I said, it was your squirrel. <laughs> you threw away their breakfast. So I fished the squirrel out of the trash can, put it on top of the fence, and he's watching me. <laughs> so finally, after half an hour, he comes and tries to pick up the squirrel. Turns out the squirrel is too heavy. Mm. So he proceeded to start tearing strips mm -hmm. off the squirrel. Mm -hmm. And then <coughs> flew down to where the ivy was on the bottom of my garden mm -hmm. and had a nail with the squirrel. But I thought it was kind of interesting because it was gray, totally gray. Mm. And when I asked about it, they said, immature. Yeah, could, definitely could have been. Definitely could have been a little immature there, especially if it's not able to hold on to the food yet, still learning how to hold on things. It can be a little clumsy. Um, we talked about the weight of the great horned owl here, and you said how this squirrel might be a little bit too heavy for it to pick up, kind of a juvenile. Um, these guys, like, again, he's a male. When it comes to these birds of prey, females are actually usually a little bit bigger, like 30% bigger on average. Uh, she's a male, she's a little bit smaller than most red tails you would see flying around there, girl. Uh, he's like two pounds, maybe a little bit less usually. Yeah. It's, he's got a smaller stuff. Yeah, he's, he's better. Their legs are actually like this long. Even the owl's legs are like that long. They're just all tucked up in the feather, you can't see them. Yeah. Do, do you guys in your love and care form ever attempt to pet them or anything, or do, will they react with his milk? So you can. <laughs> uh, some of them are comfortable enough where you can uh -huh. touch their talons just to make sure, just because like it's very quick to do like a, like a medical check, because every time you touch them, you want to make sure that they're healthy, so you just look for certain things. Occasionally, you can lift up a toe if they're they're on a good day. <laughs> it's past his bedtime, so I probably would have tried it. Um, but in, in the animal hospital, we touch them non-stop. Do they like it? No. Uh, surprisingly, great horned owls tolerate it the most. Yeah, you can actually like rub the back of their head and they're all... Like a cat. Like exactly like a cat. We do have to make sure our ones that are like this, being trained out, are comfortable with this or as comfortable as they can for us to touch them because it is for the medical uh, reasons. Like I said, touching the feet, making sure they're going to be comfortable and not get upset or think we're trying to hurt them. We also, not all of them particularly like this one, but we have to check where their, their breastbone is to see like how their weight is, because it's all feather. You can't see how chunky they are besides weighing them. So you actually feel their bones, you can kind of feel how much 
is around uh, their breath, whether you're feeling bone or fat, just feather. So we're trying to make them as comfortable as we can with us feeling them within reason. We're not, you know, going to grab them, put them on our shoulder, and like, cuddle them like you might see like, <laughs> yes, parrots. It's not, a it's not like that. <laughs> all, all these animals are not going to be like that. For a lot of these wild birds, if you're touching anywhere from like the head down, maybe like on the back of the neck, sometimes it's seen either as aggression or as a maiden kind of ritual. <laughs> so not particularly something you want a wild animal associating you with either. <laughs> so you gotta be selective when you're able to touch and make sure they're okay with it, you're okay with it, everyone's staying safe, especially our animal friends. All yeah, right. That's because they're so fluffy, they could lose a lot of weight and you wouldn't realize. Until yeah, without weighing every single day, which yeah. is a little stressful, you know, grabbing them, putting them on a scale on and off. Yeah. That is one of the things we train them to do besides coming out on programs. Uh -huh. Um, the best thing is, yeah, just if they're coming just quick, just feel, all right, you're good. If we start to notice they're getting a little skinnier, then we can, okay, let's weigh you and see when you're... Yeah, it is long. by far one of the important checks we do on a daily basis. Just, how are you doing? Are you doing okay? Are you eating well? Who's the weight? Especially in the hospital, we need to make sure they're eating properly, because they're not going to, especially well, they're not going to tell you that they're feeling unwell, they're not eating. They're going to hide that, because that means they're vulnerable. Oh. She hurt. <laughs> uh, what was the biggest bird you have? Biggest? Probably our bald eagle. She does not count on programs. She's not that kind of bird. She's not too big a fan of eagle. Her, her feet don't work out. Well. Yeah, she can't only gloves too well. Um, our biggest that we kind of come out with is probably our big horned owl there, the female. She can be our biggest one. Uh, or actually, technically our vulture. We have a turkey vulture. Technically, he would be a little bit bigger. His wings open up a lot bigger. You can get like a six foot wingspan on him. Do you have to watch like raising your voice or uh, can you give him any command? So, commands for him, not necessarily. <laughs> um, obviously, with all animals, you don't want to be like yelling at them because mm -hmm. then you become a threat. So, for, like talking like this, he's been doing it for a decade, almost two decades at this point. Um, so he's pretty comfortable with people, so talking like this, and especially in like big crowds, he's content 99% of the time. Until there's a little dog. <laughs> yeah, like, well, once there's a dog, it's like, oh. Because he wants it or because he's scared? He's actually afraid of it. Yeah. It's a predator. It's a four-legged animal running around. He's like, oh. Don't like it. Last question. You get a new uh, hawk in or a new owl in, and you think, well, we could maybe train this one for showing. Um, how long is the process? I know I'm sure it varies from individual to individual and some never make it through, but on average, how long does it take to train one to become comfortable in a situation like this? When we get some of the different animals through mm -hmm. hospital, a lot of them go something this would be really cool if we could have. We don't keep them just because we think it would be cool or be a good animal to have. Our first is to get them out there. We had over, I said, 6,300 animals. We cannot have the room for all of those animals there. So we try to get them to go back out on their own. If it proves they can't be released, then we have to see whether we can get the right permits in order for us to keep it or if we have to transfer it to someone else. If we can't get the permits, then we can start to see whether they're going to be able to be trained to do this. And educate them will be comfortable coming out in the glove and everything. Very much depends on the individual, depends on the species. Um, some of them, we've had a couple like speech apps that take like six months. Start to be able to comfortable to start coming out in programs and seeing people. We have a, another red tail hawk. She's been in training for three years and she's still not ready. Mm -hmm. It's a wow. large she's variation. Still yeah, she's, she's still ready. She's a little bit on the long end. Most of species of hawks or owls are, are pretty much untrainable because they're just too wild in general. It really depends on the individual. I will say. Um, a lot of times you'll see online of people that will have either owls or hawks that will have like flying from hand to hand or anything. I mean just falconers will be other like rescue centers that do that. They are ones that usually they got from birth. And they're able to have them as a chick and they kind of get them used to people right away. We don't get that. We get ones that have already been alive for a little while. We have to get over that hurdle. If humans are a threat, don't go near them. So there's always a little bit of a little buffer there. A learning curve. Yes, that's a nice way to say it. <laughs> um, I'd say some of the most difficult ones we've had, we, I don't think we've ever had a bald eagle. We don't get that too often. We've never had one that's been able to be trained, either injury-wise or uh, temperament-wise. Um, Back in your place, what is her 
environment. So she that has her own, own. No, so the she room? she has a full enclosure. It's mm -hmm. probably half the size of the mm -hmm. kitchen, um, and she does. It's about half the half, and then she has a suite mate yeah. who stands on the other side of her. So he can fully jump around and fly around as he pleases. Mm -hmm. And come out and program and stuff a lot, so he gets a little bit of time to spread the wings and come out and see mm -hmm. people. So, a little bit better. We'll do our last question so we don't want to keep um, too long. Does Swan still travel with you? Unfortunately, Swan is no longer with us. Oh, my heart is broken. Swan was one of the absolute favorite little barred owls that we had, and he would sit there on a bug for hours. Or did he die? Yes, he was unfortunately a little bit elderly, and he, he passed away. At before May, so it's like three and a half, four years ago, yeah. somewhere around there. Uh, but he was good for a while. We do have another bar owl, Luna. She is not really. In the works. <laughs> she, she's in the works. She's also being stubborn. So I don't don't hold your breath on that one. But we'll see. Uh, we we try them when they come in, but not all of them except have the temperament, and we're not going to force them if they don't want to. Like that, he's been with us for twenty years, twenty one at this point. Um, Doing programs for like wonderful. 15 of those years or so. He's great at it. He adapted really well. Other ones, not so much. Uh, he's, he will probably be sound asleep by the yes. time we get home. <laughs> yes. I went in and it was 5 30 and he was not, not thrilled. But now that he's out, he's ready, he's good. Alright, we are going to set him back because I don't want you guys to. If you have a couple more questions, as he puts it back, I'll answer a couple more questions too. How, um, how often can you take them out? So he's going to program tonight, mm -hmm. and presumably his program is a stress, and you want to not stress them too much. So what would be a typical schedule, like once a week, once every two weeks, once a month? It does also, every this depends on the animal. Uh, depends on their own temperament. He's really pretty good. Um, if we go to take them out and they're showing signs of stress, like, not coming to your glove and flying the other way and avoid you. We don't, okay, you're not good for it. That's fine, we'll get somebody else. He's usually pretty good. We can do him, usually try to get him at least one day for you. <coughs> Sometimes we can do back to back, day to day. Um, he's okay. It's kind of a temperament kind of thing. There are other ones, like the big owl there, she needs a few more days to kind of ease out there. She's not as uh, friendly. <laughs> She likes her perfect time and time to calm down in between there. Uh, but usually we try not to do it back to back that is a stress. I want to give them at least a day or two. Um, but some of them, a lot more adaptable, are turkey vulture, I believe I mentioned. Um, he could do it every day, no problem. He, he, loves, he loves people. He would stand with people all day if he could. So he would have no problem with back to back. I, I have a question. I know that Rowan is planning to do a veterinarian hospital yes. or that. Yep. Are you guys going to be involved in that at all? And what, what do you see your role playing? Because a lot of Vets, you know, you have an exotic vet for those animals. You don't have your run-of-the-mill cat-dog vet. Correct. Okay, so anything that's an exotic animal, like a rabbit, a bird, out of the normal of mm -hmm. what people keep as a pet, I would assume you need some kind of specialized training for that. And is Bowen incorporating that into their, their program and all that you know of? Or so you definitely need some extra special care, especially for these wild bird stuff, more than just like a pair of parakeet or something like that. We don't have any veterinarians on staff. Uh, we have uh, an office that a couple of them kind of help us out when we need to go. We do take them to our hospital. We can do some light work, any kind of like the surgery or anything, anything heavy, heavy or x-rays. We got to take them over there. Um, they can help us out there. Um, with Rome, we were actually at their open. <laughs> Um, with Rowan, we were actually at the opening for their veterinary thing. They had the whole big announcement. We were actually there with them. Uh, we're going to talk to them to see exactly how we can kind of tie in there because we are in this area. We are the largest and pretty much the only kind of area that does this around here. Um, so we're trying to see because we do have interns every year that come to our hospital and try to get some experience before they can continue on uh, to whatever they're going to be doing, whether it's veterinary or some kind of other kind of animal related science there. Um, so we're still working to see exactly what the relationship's going to be, but we're definitely open um, to working with them and trying to get students in so they can learn, we can learn, everybody, whatever we can to help out the animals the most. Last question, or uh, falconry is becoming quite popular uh, with here in New Jersey for hunting. And the idea you have to have a special facilities license mm -hmm. and what have you. And that uh, it is amazing. 
they can be trained, but the idea is it takes patience. It is definitely and a lot of patience. That's definitely, if you've seen demonstrations, <laughs> I go to a powwow once in a while, and there's a man that has a show, and you try it and do it, it's rewarding. It's not for everybody. But the idea is to watch, as you see in Europe, mm -hmm. in those uh, movies, mm -hmm. the Falcon Tree and what have you, it is becoming really popular. Those hundreds, we uh, mm -hmm. sure enjoy it. It's definitely a really cool thing to see. It is coming from, we get some questions about it. As a facility, we don't necessarily recommend it. No. Because what? Exactly. it is a lot of work, and not everyone is prepared for the work that you're going to do. You need special permits. You need to find a faculty who's going to train you. You'd have a uh, mentorship from them, and they're kind of a tight knit community. Usually, trying to get them to open up their secrets is a little tough. Um, yeah. But it's definitely a lot of work. You need to do your research before you start into it because it's Absolutely. with how easy he was. He was easy, but it wasn't like easy. There's still a lot of work on him, and it's to continue to work, making sure he's going to be comfortable with us and allow us to do that. And then also, we talked about the vet. A lot of money to take care of his other animals. Yeah. I will say, we get no funding from the government. We're all donations and grants. So feel free to stop by. Really? <laughs> throw that out there. Throw that out there. You're not um, associated with the state? Not at all. They get absolutely zero funding from the state. How about that? We are all private with the permits. Yeah, permits, that's all they're going to be able to So they can say that we don't legally have these things. Because that's important. It would be nice, yes. We, we would love a little bit of help from the state. Well, <laughs> <sure. laughs> but at the moment, yeah, we all have private donations, fundraisers, and uh, grants and things are pretty much how we get by there. And also, we talk about volunteers while you're with us. We have so many volunteers here. We rely heavily on our volunteers. Um, it's a very important resource, so volunteers can definitely help pretty much any organization trying to help out there. Now, we did run a good bit past time, so I'll let you guys, I'll say thank you. If you have any lingering questions, as we're packing up, you can come have and ask us. Um, otherwise, I want to thank you guys for letting us come out tonight. Let me eat up so much of your time.